This guy? Uh-huh. Oh, look. It's wild. It's like a superhero. Yeah, it's really cool. Cave art is just like a, a bridge to the past. Climbing such a one-off thing, you know, for ourselves. It's cool to see that there were people here before, like, and they had a totally different use and a totally different idea of what this place means than what we do as climbers. I feel humbled, like, climbing such a thing we're comfortable with, but this is something we have really no idea about. I just, I'm curious what the masks mean. Kicks the experience up a notch. Welcome to Weko Tanks. My name is Nicole Roque. I am one of the interpreters here at the park. Thank you all for joining me for a pictograph tour. There is at least 10,000 years of human history here. These rocks and these lands hold the stories, the histories, the ceremonies of many people, um, including cultures that still find this place sacred and important today. So in the rock here, we see grinding features. And this is more of a molcajete style. And a hole like this, this is actually a pretty shallow one, would have taken generations of people to grind. And every time I see a feature like this, I like to sit and put myself um, in that time and, and look around and really try and take in what it would have been like to sit here and process my foods. I think it's a, these are really beautiful, beautiful features. People call this image starry-eyed man because of its star-shaped eyes and if we look at it there are four points so you have the four seasons you have the four cardinal points you have the four stages of life so this is just one of the over 200 face designs and this image is attributed to a culture of people known as the Jornada Mogollon they lived here from about 200 of the common era um, to about 1450. They left the majority of the imagery we see here. There are many um, theories and ideas and beliefs as to what these images mean, um, but we'll never know exactly. humanizing, um, very relatable even. Um, it's lovingly known as Paintsville. So here you can see 
what looks like some spilled paint. You can see some very faint red pigment, um, seemingly nothing. And I think that sometimes speaks to how we just overlook things that aren't big and grand. So you can see that mask. I think it just adds a humanness that we can connect to. Just like we do, we make mistakes. Nice. Uh, I kind of slipped a little bit. Oh, that's so much better. We all share this very human nature. The connectedness that this, this allows us to feel. It gives me kind of courage to go on with my day, you know, like sometimes you spill some paint. It's all right. It's gonna be a wild, like throw the toe in and just hope it looks. <laughs> I was tired that time. If you consider the time and the energy and the resource and the planning that it took to paint these images, we know that they're important. We know that they had deep spiritual value. Just like we do now, right? Like we put our hands in concrete or we make handprints with paint. It helps uh, kind of mark growth or mark that passage of time and, and as we get older we can always look back at like oh look at my little hand and how much I've grown. One interpretation is that it's a very similar uh, thing going on here. Like those little tiny hand prints that you can come back to and be like look at how look at how small I was. The very first trip I took here was probably in 2003. I'm just kind of dirt bagging in the tent with like no stove, you know, cold food all day. I got that pocket finally. It was like, like crazy <laughs> at the time. I was like, oh, oh my God, don't drop it. Of silence. Some compare this image to another Mesoamerican deity, Tlaloc. And Tlaloc is known as the um, god of rain, of, of thunder. And Tlaloc is said to be uh, a very giving god, but also could be very vengeful. Come on. 